Welcome to another edition of the Jodie Bunting podcast, where today we're talking why women should lift weights. And we've got an amazing guest. She is Gail Abbey. She's a personal trainer who's an expert in women's wellness, yoga, Pilates, and more importantly, strength training. Gail, welcome. Hi, hi, Jodie. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you very much. Now, we know each other through the Rachel Holmes Fit Pro group, and Rachel actually recommended you for this topic. Did Why did she do that? Excellent. Uh, probably because I've been in the industry such a long time. <laughs> and, it can't uh, just be that. that. <laughs> you must be good at it. Well, you know, I, I'm passionate about it anyway. I'm passionate about women and strength training. And um, yeah, I mean, I have been in the industry for a, a, as a qualified trainer over 23 years. And then we didn't need so many qualifications. There wasn't all that before. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, well, there was. I went for a NABA, uh, National Association of Bodybuilding. Um, that's NABA. And I went for that. That was what. Um, the qualifications were back then. They yeah. became a lot stricter from then then on. Yeah, yeah. And and you've also done obviously your ETM and all those other fitness qualifications as well, have you? Yeah, I did the whole lot in one go. Really, I did um, an exercise and fitness diploma with the YMCA on the when I moved over to that because you needed to have all those other sort of qualifications as well. And initially, uh, when I first started way back, probably like say more than 30 years ago, I went into this one class with, uh, uh, I used to attend one class, it was like a circuit class. And um, the girl had, uh, or the lady at the time, she became a good friend, as you always do with your guests and clients, don't you yeah. really? If you get close to them, you're really close. And she just said one day, you know how to do this now, I'm going on holiday. So come in and take my class. And I'm like, ah! she? and she says, all you have to do is work from the top of the head down. And that's it, to music. And I freaked out and I did it, I did it. But I just was like, I cannot do this until I've had some professional training on it. You know, this was like way back in the day. And I thought, oh, I can't do this. I need professional training on all this to do this. And, but that was what it was like way back then in uh, yeah. sports centres, you know, leisure centres and stuff. Yeah, but I love that concept of working from head to toe, though. It's a nice, simple way to yeah. think about it, isn't it? It was, yeah, it was, really, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, forget about learning about body parts and all that sort of health and safety. Just go for it, head to toe. Exactly, it was. How weird. But... You know, yeah, yeah, and you used to pull people off uh, the floor to come and stand either side with you and do it then. I, I don't know whether people do that so much in classes these days, but yeah, you know, it's, uh, it, it is it is weird, you know, in an exercise, a group fitness class, how you just see some people with a perfect technique, don't you? Even beginners sometimes. Yes, that's right, actually. And I think I did get it from the off. I think, uh, I mean, going back. Before that, I was in a marching jazz band in my youth, all the way through until I finally found fitness. So I'd been a lot of body aware of how you had, had a very to... strong core and back then. That's right. We had to have good, strong posture and very high knee lift in those uh, marches. So yeah, you did have that body awareness, which is good. Yeah. So let's tackle this big issue then. Why should women lift weights? Um, well, it's it's something that, you know, when, when I first came into the industry, I I was um, sort of brought into it by, I walked into this studio full of guys, usually it was at that time, and it was a good trainer that brought me forward. And I, I think it was a friend of mine, we'd been doing a lot of other stuff, and then all of a sudden she went and started doing weights, and I saw her physique start to change incredibly so I thought right I need to know more about this and I think you know that yeah yes at the time everybody was the same same trying to burn calories off because they'd over it and I just thought this I, I remember going into this class this um gym and having some training with this personal trainer at the time and saying to him you know I'm so glad when I just couldn't get 
rid of the body fat and I'm in the shape I want and I don't have to come again. And, you know, and I just, and I'm trying to do this with cardio all the while. And he's like going, you will never ever have that. So you need to find something that you really love and you find that really makes a difference to you. So I think that women should lift weights because basically I think it's one of the quickest ways for you to be able to say, right, yeah, I don't like this about my body and I can change this, you know? And so you can get a program to change that. So I think that's, first of all, that's that's one of the most attractive things that has applied. And then of course, you've got to go into the health benefits of it, which are as you, as I've aged and become, you know, now peri-postmenopausal, the benefits of, um, of of strength training are immense because you know um for um osteo osteoporosis for bone density you need that but more so that fear of what we had when we were younger is always of weight training is like i don't want to get big but i cannot yeah. do weight training because i want to get big i don't want to get big i'm going to get bigger there was all sorts of myths around yeah if you stop it'll just go all fat you'll, yeah. you'll get big, big big and then you'll go fat and there was all that sort of panic wrapped around weight training and uh, i always like to investigate when there's something like that anyway so yeah so i went i went deeper into that and and realized the health benefits that are attached with it and as, as we age, that muscle thing, you know, as you get past beyond your 20s to 30s, you start to, you, uh, uh, you, you know, I can only speak from how I've, how I've seen my body change yeah. uh, as a female and see that, you know, that it's essential, that it does go through such a lot of changes uh, externally, internally, and that the muscle loss is quite significant um, and happens quite a lot faster than what a, a female will think it happens anyway, do you know? So yeah. it, it, you've got to train hard to get a lot of muscle on. If you want to, you've got to train hard. You've got to eat lots and lots of food. So that fear, uh, uh, you know, is easily put out the window there. But as the benefits go, yes, we definitely need that. And, and especially as we age and we get to menopause, because that osteosarcopenia of muscle and bone loss is huge. And so that has the knock-on effect, of course, with your balance, um, with any, with back strengthening. We know that core strengthening, you know, is, it's very easy to get bad backs um, from poor posture and poor sitting. So it improves your posture, weight training, strength training improves your posture. Um, I also think that it's really good for uh, improving your um, levels of pain barriers as well because yeah. you go through that DOMS, the delayed onset muscle soreness, you know, uh, which is if you've trained hard, then you get those and you have that, you know, initially people start, ah, ouch, oh, ah, ah, this is really painful to me, but you get used to that and you want it, you want that sort of physical pain when they yeah. can't sit down on the toilet the next day because their quads yeah. are killing so much. Yeah, and the more that you have to be, ha you have to go slower down, the better that you think it works out, which is is bonkers. But that is hard for people, you know, that are, have trained for a long time and know their limits anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Know that limits. Initially, we are looking to, uh, you know, train them, uh, and we'll talk about a bit more beginner, I suppose, as we move on in this uh, this session. But yeah, initially it is also injury prevention is huge. I think yeah. I went through a phase of doing a lot of marathon training and uh, my clients have done a lot of marathon training and stuff with me. So whatever sort of trend I'd gone in, they sort of, oh, well, we'll have a bit of that then, we'll do that. So, you know, but yes, but you can't do it without the strength training attached to it. Because if not, you're going to have a lot more imbalances. Yeah. It helps keep the muscular strength especially in the hip area the, and the hip core and leg area, you know, it helps a lot um, with preventing injuries in that. And even in shoulders, because you're frozen like this a lot of the time in running. So it's endless benefits, endless benefits. Yeah.
And just going back to that myth about the, the male, female putting on muscle, it's actually yeah. down to the body chemicals, isn't it? You know, the makeup yeah. is different between men and women. And that's why women who lift weight are not going to get like massive. No. No, never. But what, what we also want as well with it is that weight really imp improves the metabolic metabolic rate. There's the epoch effect, which is the excessive post e epoch effect, excessive post oxygen consumption, uh, which is. Uh, I'm you glad know, you which, said that, Gail. <laughs> I know, so yeah, so that is really you know that it means that basically that we be we we burn more calories at rest or be due to strength training. And you seem to have that when you're doing a lot of body weight training and strength training, uh, that means that whereas like with cardio, it doesn't have such a long effect after than it does with strength training. So, and also the, the thing is, is that, you know, again, this thing about ladies getting bigger is that when you do build a little bit of muscle, like, and hopefully you get it on there, it's that, it's a live tissue so your body needs live tissue uh, yeah. and it needs to be fed so if you carry on eating the same if you are somebody who doesn't want to build but you want to uh, you would like to lose some weight and body fat let's say then if you kept the same, same sort of diet going but started to exercise you'd increase your muscle mass slightly which would then need more food more calories to survive your body needs more calories to survive so therefore you're burning more calories off and you don't really need to change anything except for that exercise beginners to exercise beginners to weight training have that effect massively if they are training in a good program so yeah it's all exciting stuff your, your metabolic rate is higher it's great news the way I like to describe it to my guys is just to say, I want you to be a fat burning machine. Isn't yeah. that a, that's a nice, simple way to think about it. You know, the, the bigger your muscles, the more calories you're going to burn up, even just sitting there, even just lying in bed asleep. Too right, too right. It's like Christmas has just been, hasn't it? And yes, we've all over it at some point, but you know what? Those days that you, that those days that you really consume those like, couple of thousand calories whatever you did more or whatever at Christmas day if you could you know for me it was like yeah I'm getting in that I'm getting in that gym not to burn them off but I'm going to use them because I know I'm going to get a much better workout I'm yeah. full of energy and actually I'm go I've got this excess calories here that is going to put some muscle on me now because you need to be in calorie excess to to gain that type of muscle anyway and as I say you know, post-menopause, you really are up against it trying to keep your muscle on. So, you know, it's it's a good thing, you know. And I think in injury as well, a lot of people realise about muscle wastage. You know, if you've been in a hospital bed, if you've had a stroke or something for three months, it's just unbelievable, isn't it, how the body just naturally gets rid of muscle. Exactly, yeah. My, um, my, my husband's just had a knee replacement, actually, and... Uh, you know, he's six weeks off his legs now and he's saying, you know, everything's starting to, he's not massively into his exercise, but he actually annoyingly holds quite a, got a lot of good muscle as some, as some people do, you know? Yeah. And uh, so, he, but he's noticing that muscle wastage now. So yeah, you definitely have to get back onto the weights to get that there because, you know, knee replacements, it, it, if you don't get that, it, it can carry on then as you know you're you're in older years, it starts coming older years to so balance and falls and fractures and so many things. So yeah. So just winding back to the beginning, how did you get into weights and what age were you? Um, I was around nineteen, and um, yeah, I was looking for something. I was doing. I'd moved out from the the band, the marching jazz band when I was about 17 and then I went into uh, into a couple of classes which were called calisthenics. They weren't quite calisthenics. They were um, more, more sort of bar ballet type ones that I was doing. That's what seemed to be around. It was a lot of stretch and movement. They were great classes. I loved them. Um, and then I moved in, as I say, to this, this 
recreation centre where they had a really good offer on. And so I went into that and started to lift weights at that when that guy said to me, no, you need to, if you were really, really want to change your body, then you need to do weights. So I did that and I, I, I made friends with another great teacher who we just used to stand there doing um, light weights, lots of reps actually, lots of body pump type type classes together, that type of, you know, body training, lightweight yeah. body training classes. Um, so we did that and and then, yeah, I started to go, then I started going to some of the bodybuilding competitions and have a look oh, at things. Oh, did like you? That. Yeah, yeah, I started to delve into that. I took my NABA course, which was the bodybuilding course, and I went into that a lot more. I didn't want to perform and go on stage myself. I wasn't I wasn't into that, but I was very much wanting to help people at that time and get the real changes, girls to get real changes in the physiques, yeah. See, I like to remind my slimmers as well, because they sit there tracking their foods and stuff, and they think, you know, am I the only person on this planet doing this? And I said, look, there's a lot of athletes, bodybuilders, fit pros, they're all tracking their foods, they're all tracking their matra. It's actually a really healthy and yeah. something a lot of people do, isn't it? It is. For you I mean, more I'm... than anyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I went through a spell of not tracking, and I went through a, that spell of um, weighing myself, which was, uh, I felt it didn't work for me weighing myself a lot because yeah. I was trying to chase the half, half stone all the time. So, and then I started to track and I tracked and through the, I threw the weight, the weighing scales weight because the half a stone isn't, isn't here, neither here nor there, is it, yeah. you know? And I, I just thought that is not, that's that's dictating my mood on a daily basis, how I feel at the moment. So I track my food and I track, I don't go massively into the macros and everything because kind of get a good idea that you need protein on every meal anyway. Yeah. And that you've got to have the good carbohydrates. So the tracking, you know, is fantastic. And um, it does occasionally work when you want a bit of rubbish, doesn't it, as well, yeah. you add that on as well. But on the whole, you know that even when you're tracking, you've still got to keep to a natural food list, haven't you? As much as possible, you know? As much as you, because you know that's feeding your body, that is giving you the best. But I think it just keeps you mindful. It is so easy to do. Um, it just is a habit that you create and, and that's it, yeah. So tracking absolutely works for me, it does. And I'll never step on the scales again. I use my clothes like that and you know you know how you feel don't you? if you're feeling groggy you know if you've yeah. got if you're eating like christmas come you know when you fall into the pattern of like eating pudding every single day you know <laughs> with your mince pies and your whatever and exactly you know uh, it mm, this is it what do you think about tracking body fat percentage um uh, I think it's okay in its place, yeah. So if you want to go into the, if you want to go into the bodybuilding, uh, body, yeah, the Miss, the Miss Physique and those competitions, yes, it's essential to do that. It really is. Um, but for for the a lady who just wants to change her body shape and feel strong, because uh, you feel this incredible resilience to everything when you weight train, you have a sort of it's power. You have yeah. a power and it's, it comes in and out there. So I think that body fat, it can be a little bit obsessive, but if you want to go down the bodybuilding route and the competition route, you have to do it. And yeah. I always, when anyone, when I've had anyone say that, right, yeah, I'm going to take this to the next level now. I always say, just be careful mentally because you do have that, once you go to a very, very thin body fat, you do have that feeling of, oh, I didn't, I, I'm now feeling squidgy, I'm feeling whatever it is. You're going back to yeah. normal. You're going back to normal. It's not, and that type of uh, low body fat isn't sustainable anyway for anybody to stay that low body fat. It's not healthy to do. And often ladies, when they go to a very low body fat, if they are in that, um, 
if they are in the uh, cycle, you know, in your in your fertility, fertility cycle, then you can have uh, amenorrhea, which is stopping of periods and stuff like that, which yeah. is not healthy. So you do not have to weigh up. It's good to do. That's what it's another. It's another discipline. It's like somebody saying they want to run a marathon. That has its pitfalls and, and everything else because everything has to go a little bit obsessive. So yeah. when you retract from that, you do have a cut. Some people do have a withdrawal, and you know, and, and, and there are there, and your body takes a while to get back to normal, and you have to you have to acknowledge that it is going to take a while because you've done an extreme thing with it, so it takes a while to recover out of that type of thing. Have you had any issues in your life where you put on weight or been unfit and, and got it back through exercise and fitness? Um, I think really, yeah, in my, when, if I'm up, when I was around 15 to 30, I kind of like struggled with uh, IBS a lot. And yep. um, it was that, it's that, actually it's that period of time that you move away from your parents cooking, which was really good cooking, and yep. decide that actually, what's my friend eating? What are you eating? <laughs> I want to, you know, actually she's, She's in a size smaller than me because she's a different body frame, babe, you know? Um, you know, but, but I, I think she's got a lovely figure. Well, she's different, you know? You're yeah. never going to get there. You know now, that's the answer. But at that time, you'll think, right, no, this is... And you start to pick up diet books and you start to eat, like, these little silly slim chocolates and things yeah. like that to try and do it. You, there's all sorts of things and that can create a really bad digestive situation going on. And that's what that's what I had from about 15 to 30 because then you'd go out with friends and 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 like, you know, and so you might have and, and I realised I did have a dairy issue and I didn't know I'd got that. So I, and I ate a lot of yogurt, I loved yogurt. So it's those at that time I really couldn't control um, how I how anything was going on in in my digestive system and uh, and my, you know I just didn't feel well and um, yeah. that was probably the worst time and um, and then yeah you go out with friends and you eat load of rubbish and you can't get you can't get, I couldn't get away with it day on day my digestive system wouldn't allow that to happen yeah. anyway so and thought. I need to investigate this further because if this is creating me such pain, discomfort, to the fact that sometimes I couldn't breathe because my stomach had distended so badly that I needed to really dig deep. And that's really one of the reasons I came into the fitness industry. I needed to know more about diet yeah. and exercise. And actually, and, and yeah, and my mum used to put me, my mum used to put me on diets to lose that extra half a stone. And it's like mad now, you know? I remember my mum making every, you know, she was a bit like myself. You have a habitual, a habitual like menu night because it's easy to kind of remember, even though it's varied. Yeah. And I like, make a family cottage pie from scratch, but she'd go and buy me a cottage pie from like some of these like ready meal com companies. Yeah, the calorie it, control. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, what's going on? And it was full of rubbish compared to hers. So you, you kind of like, and those days gave me the sort of wrong idea of what we should be eating really. Yeah. When I was at my most ill <laughs> at that time of, yeah. yeah. So just going back to fitness then, what other fitness advice do you give to your guys um, other than weights? Is there anything else people should be doing? Yeah, there's a, yeah. I think that's okay. Let's pass forward into the ladies that I that I train around mine. They are peri postmenopausal now, that type of age group that I do now. And um, yes, because of all the different things that you have at that time, you have joint inflammation, uh, lethargy. You, you know, some days you can't you you can't get out of bed or you're up for a couple of hours and you want to get back into bed and your motivation goes and things like that so yes for that reason and uh and for the aches and pains that i've come to know um i i took up yoga so i i teach yoga i took that up when i was doing marathon training actually so because i was getting a lot of 
niggles in my hips um, and I knew that I had like tight um, tight IT tight pelvic area and I needed to stretch that and the yoga helped with that so that's when I went into that I also knew that I had this rah rah sort of attitude on everything and I needed to level off and do something for my mind as well yeah. um, externally there was a lot of things going on at that time when I took yoga up as well there was a lot of sort of uh, business like this and I just needed a bit of help mentally so the focus, I chose, yeah. chose yoga for that uh, I'd had running for that before but I chose I, I thought well it's it's everything's on full on I need to level off so yoga I went into for that I love yoga um, now where I am now I really value mobility training we do now <laughs> really value that a lot of moving sort of stretching movement um cardio it has its place uh what do i um, i still enjoy a run occasionally i like to kind of keep something in the bag but it, you know and never do it for weight loss do it because yeah. you love to get out in the open air or a power walk instead and that's to get out in the open air so I always have looked when I've walked into a gym and that you know want to or look at a class timetable. It's for me that is my box of chocolates. <laughs> oh, really what is. are we gonna do next? Yeah, that is, and I think outside of all of it, you have to make you have to have your fun. And yeah, yeah I, love, I love dance. I love to do. And funnily enough, when I go to any of the uh, fitness exhibitions that we we you you probably go to too is i mean all the dance ones you can yeah. forget i love to go and like you know let go you know? <laughs> yeah let's do this so i just think like that i think you just have to look at look at uh as far as scump i don't know if you know that character but like you know it's like a box of chocolates you know yeah. you never know what you're gonna get and you never know that good feeling when you're in the class, how it's going to make you feel, or whatever. So, <laughs> right now, let's talk about my favourite subject, food. So, <laughs> people who are starting to lift, uh, do they need to have anything special? You know, everybody thinks, "Oh, I've got to have a protein shake if I'm going to lift weights." Is that true? Uh, I, I disagree with that, to be honest. Um, Good. <laughs> Yeah, I think, you know, you do see the guys in the gym and they're taking all, all different supplements and, and stuff like that. But when I look at, I look at the, when, when I've done comparisons to, you know, uh, those who aren't, to those who have, there isn't, there's, there's nothing there except the level of work that they put in and a good diet, you know, yeah. it's a good diet is important. Um, and that, that has the protein, so, you know, probably around 1.7, 1.8 grams of protein per kilo of, uh, for, for training, if you are doing a lot of bodybuilding style training. But otherwise, you know, don't get obsessive about it. You just need to make sure that, and again, with the, the timing of food, some people say like, uh, you know, do you, do you eat before you train or not? And stuff yeah. like that. Well, um, again, it's sometimes you know i would definitely for me for me it works if i do eat about an hour an hour and a half something small so yeah. something small it would be like some protein uh i mean you know it, it isn't 100 percent clean but i really enjoy a crumpet with peanut butter and a banana on it you know i love it and that gives me actually a really powerful training session so you know should i say i probably should say a bit of spelt bread with you know which is cleaner of course you know but let's be honest here we're not always one yeah. percent on the line and um so yeah as long as you 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 have but some people prefer to fast and, and go straight into a gym yeah. class and do some. but as long as you're eating within that sort of i think it's about 40 40 to 90 minute window after that's the most important thing because if you aren't then you it's kind of a it is a bit of a wasted workout you are aiming to keep your muscle on you are aiming to keep your energy in your body and you shouldn't be walking out the gym and then going off and thinking about eating three four hours later 
you know it should be it should be quite imminent it's all you. about that recovery isn't it straight after yeah that. yeah and i've tried in the past you know when i first came into this it was like six small meals a day eat like that they worked for me when i was having a lot of protein though and i was doing the proper bodybuilding style type of foods with those i actually I actually had some knock-on effect with kidney issue going on yeah. and I was getting this um, like ammonia taste in my in my mouth a lot and I didn't feel that that was that was a really good thing to have you know for me when your kidneys are having to overwork which was shown that it did I thought you know I'm not I'm not going to I'm going to level this out a little bit better you know uh, so I didn't make protein quite so Let's eat that. Let's eat. Let's eat, eat every time. I go yeah. more what I feel, really. Um, and I definitely don't cut carbohydrates. You know, never. I never cut carbohydrates out um, because my training my training suffers if I cut carbohydrate cut, cut those down. Training suffers a lot. And again, you, you know, it's all about starting to be more body awareness. So I do recommend that people keep themselves a food journal. Yeah. to get more insight into what is suiting their body because we know that yes we should be eating more natural foods and especially for the gut microbiome now but if i say to you eat a lot of broccoli and eat this you might have some some stomach intolerance that doesn't like that so you have yeah. to going back to my ibs days which i don't have anymore because of those things have been keeping food journals and knowing what are trigger foods and i think that that is essential if you really really want to know more about your body do journal your food it gives you a, a, with your training yeah i just love your uh, point earlier that you said just making sure you're having protein with every single meal you know it, it can be as simple as that can't it yeah it is it is because yeah i do get that sugar rush if I don't, I do notice that I get that. So if I if I eat porridge and I don't have some protein, you know, like, you know, just or what could I say? Yeah, if I have, like, say, if I had a jacket potato and I didn't have any protein with it or whatever, that I would get a bit jittery in the yeah. hours after. I start to get jittery. Uh, I start to think I'm hungry and uh, you know, and I'm weak on my workout. It's it is that like. It is like that wall for me that stops that, you know, it, it is, it, it disperses, you know, the insulin better. It, it, it controls the insulin in my body a lot better. And I don't know, probably because there is that, you know, there is that thing that when you have looked at you, you have really at full health for a long time that you are more aware. Whereas other people go, what are you talking about? I yeah. don't even know that, you know? I don't even notice it. No, don't notice it. So, but we do when you've been doing it a long time. Yeah. You know. Right. We've talked about food, fitness. Let's talk about lifestyle. So, what do you think? Do you think we need to sleep lots as well? Do we need to do our yoga meditations? Uh, I'm just having that thing about sleep. And again, I think it. Do, I do think you're better with you, you know if you can get your eight, seven, eight hours. If that's what hits you, that's great. I do know some people that say that they're five, six, and I'm great on that. And so it's again, it's your body's unique, but um, I think that uh, yeah, you've got to find out where your where yours is. For me, if I'm if I'm sleep deprivation, I do wake up hungrier. I'm hungrier, but and when I I've had this period actually over the Christmas holiday. I don't know whether it's the adjusting timetables, but um, just that three hour sleeps every night. And it's like, this is driving me mad because- You just can't function, is, can you? No, this is supposed to be my rest two <laughs> days and now I sleep. So it's, um, it's, just, it's just a nightmare then. But what I do believe in not, it, it, I do try to not do is what I say, die twice is that watch, you're lying there for three hours going, oh, I'm tired, I know I need to get to sleep, I know I need to get to sleep, so yeah, I don't now, I wake up, I get my laptop out, I work, because, but I'm fortunate, I'm self-employed, and I know that there's probably 
I, I know I can scale my day to the energy levels that I've got the next day. But I try to say this to my clients, if you're not getting, if you're not, if you do have a sleepless night, look at your working day and try and, which we should always do, get the big frogs out of the way in the morning so that you know that as your energy wanes in the afternoon, you've done the big stuff and then you can sort of go a bit, all right, yeah, big work, you know? Um, and that's how I try to work mine, if that goes like that. But yeah, I value my eight hours, I do. Now you're just up the road from me actually in Litchfield, aren't you, Gail? How and you, you teach... Where are you based now? I'm in Hatton, near Burton. So you oh, literally okay. just up the A38. Yeah, not far. <laughs> um, and you teach classes, you're a personal trainer and all that, but you also do something called the Workout Lounge. Tell us about that. Well, the Workout Lounge I created um, a couple of years ago. And um, I put all my uh, my video uploads on there uh, and any, uh, any courses that I've done in the past that um, go on there as well. Um, and that is something that is uh, one month access actually for unlimited on-demand workouts. Um, so you can, that's where people can go on there and, uh, and just join that, that subscription for that for very minimal fee anyway. So yeah, and, um, and then yeah, other courses that I do as well outside that, but that's the workout lounge part, yeah. And yeah. you do a specific you know, women's for weight sort of course or classes? Yes, I've, I have one that I've launched right now, actually. It's called the Body Mind Project, and it is building strength and resilience of body and mind. And this is for women who are like uh, post, uh, sorry, peri, post, that and, uh, and beyond menopause, really. That's the sort of... Um, um, I'm not going, uh, we, we, we're sort of wrapping the whole thing about weights into that. So it's not it's not massively in depth on menopause because that's another course outside yeah. of that. But this is one that is building the strength resilience. Um, uh, there's so much outside noise in the world going on. And especially, you know, as ladies move into this age group, we've often got a lot of parents that are alive and going and needing our support and health, uh, help in that time. And it challenges people in all directions, that type of thing. And and also, you know, some, some have had children and, and lots of things going on. It's a very busy period of life, but, uh, and lots of uh, careers and lots of stress coming. So it's people who are trying to, to get fit and healthy around that time are, you know, there's a lot of time management issues and, and things. So it's trying to get people to the gym, showing them how they can get the results with strength training, this strength training program that I've got ladies that can get to that. And then at the same time, um, showing them how to easily fit the uh, nutrition in around that as well. So we're building mental resilience. There's a lot of motivation, psychological stuff that I do, a lot of motivational talks on that program. Um, and, you know, uh, you know, the psychology of certain things of motivation as well, because I'm very much into all of that, how, how the mind works and how, yeah. how people are motivated, yeah. So that's my latest thing, the Body Mind Project. So that isn't actually on the weight, on the um, workout lounge. That doesn't go on there yet. That is a course that stands alone. The workout yeah. lounge is just um, all the videos and courses that I've done in the past that, you know, are there now and just standing there for people to pick up and, and do alone without groups being attached to it. So, yeah. but the workout, but the mind, the body mind project has, you know, a, a support group that's there on WhatsApp and, and live Facebook groups every single morning. So yeah, that's so what. Looking at that lovely picture you've got up on the wall behind you, it reminds <laughs> me of the other thing you do, which is So Spa Fitness Holidays. Tell us about this. So Spa Fitness Holidays, oh, I've got a tingle then. <laughs> <laughs> because it is my passion. I started it in 2007. Uh, a year before that, I went on holiday with a few friends uh, and, um, I mean, whenever I've been on holiday, I always can't sit, 
can't sit still for the whole day. So I like to get up. I used to love get up, go for a run. I used to come back. I'd do uh, aqua in the water, in the sea, wherever I was. Um, I'd do, and then in the evening, I'd do some abs or something or whatever before I went out. Focus on like, you know, I'd always eat nice, healthy, but full of, full of, you know, fish and Mediterranean diet. We lo I loved that on my holiday. And I went for, I think it was, uh, you know, somebody's big birthday and we all went together and they saw me, where are you going? I'm going out for a run. What? What are you doing that for? You know, there's that sort of attitude. Are you mad? Are you mad? I said, no, I'm going. Anyway, so they all sat there. Then I came back, did that. My friend's lying there on the lilo, sipping a wine while I'm doing my act. Well, she's like looking at that. And then she says, you know, can I come with you tomorrow for your run? Can I come out? Could yeah. we power walk? And said, yes, we can. Then by the end of the week, anyway, I had the whole team of that birthday party. Great. Doing, doing the whole thing with me, willingly. And then- they... And it's a great way to see where you are, isn't it? Just walking yeah. and jogging. Exactly. And so by the end of that week, they, and then they came back, you know, I never put any weight on. And of course they ate, they drank, they did everything that they did before, but they didn't gain weight and they felt amazing. So that was really when it pushed me to go for um, uh, Sos Bar which was developed in 2007 to the place that I was passionate about. I lived in Rhodes, Greece, on and off throughout from 23 onwards, on and off. And yeah. so I know the area, the whole island really well. And uh, I've got lots of connections, lots of friends there that I've made over the years. And it, it's a safe place, a really safe place. And yeah. a safe place to take women. Um, and guys, you know, but uh, my my um, fitness holidays are based around ladies and a retreat from Greece to Greece. And we do, yeah, exercise three times a day. It's, we go to a different restaurant every night. It's not ever set in the same hotel. We, we nice. go, we park up in this nice, uh, this nice studio apartments. We put our things down there and we have a nice view in the morning, wake up, but we're out after that. We're out in the whole of the area, a different beach to work out on every day, a different restaurant to eat every meal. Right. Uh, different, and then and then my, uh, my team I take and we've got uh, workouts, functional type work, functional fun in the morning, what we use different types of equipment from stability balls, bands, ladders, agility ladders, that type of thing. We just have a good old laugh and then aqua, different types of aqua. So I might do a spin class in the water, a box fit in the class. Um, you know, so really very hit, hit in the class because even like ladies who don't like jumping can get that in the water, can't they? You yeah. know, um, and really enjoy the power of that. And then in the evening, I do a yoga or a Pilates or um, so, yeah, it's, it's or, an, or an abdominal workout. And then we have a day off once a week. So we either go for an excursion so I can take them to Rhodes Town. Half the group usually say, yeah, I'm staying here, want to la lounge around the pool, do nothing. We do the first workout and then they've got the whole day off. And yeah. then we, just, we meet up for, um, occasionally, if they want to, some will phone, message me and say, are you back in the village? Are you, anybody meeting for dinner? And others yeah. say, oh, I'm going to just go to bed early. I don't want to do anything. I'm going to read my book. I'm going to chill here, do what I want. The village itself is like, it's all, we're all like that. We're all close. And, right. and if, I'm, if I have a big group, bigger group, then I've got like this horseshoe area of hotels that, we stay in, so I plant them, people yep. are in the same area, um, but maybe not the same uh, place, but usually we're all in the same area. Uh, and, and and so it's, fir it's first come, first served as to which one they're in on that, that way, where, and they get used to it. I repeat business every year, it's a proper, you know, they once they go once, they come two, three times onwards, you know. Um, so yeah. It's 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 exciting. They book their own flights now, and I I so pull together right. the rest. We do a spa day as well, complete spa day. And I can I I'm a bit we're a bit like concierge 
concierge, fitness instructor, advice, nutritionists. We give the whole the whole thing. So when we go out, we they can have the option if they want to come on to the holiday and they want to, they say, I would like to lose some weight this holiday. So I give them that consultation before we go. Yeah. We have a, we have a meet up before we go. So we go out for a meet up meal if they all want to travel to me if they're a little bit further or we do an online consultation as well um, and uh, during during that I find out what they actually really want to to get from from that holiday whether it's just simply you time having a laugh relax get away from the normal routine or whether it is really um, I like to lose some weight so yeah. they would be the ones that we we say right you weigh and measure before you come and, but we always do a fitness uh, assessment and a fitness test. Uh, it's not a test, it's like sort of a benchmark for them. So yeah. we always do a routine that they do a bench where they can have a benchmark where they've started at the beginning of the week. And we repeat that at the end of the week. And the gains are huge. Amazing. They cannot believe what how much they are. And the people that come, they're not necessarily even regular fitness goers. They just decide right. that they want to try something new and they come along. Some some ladies have not ever been in the gym that year more than three times and they'll yeah. come. You know, uh, we, we really, you know, we wrap it around those people. You know, I, the, you know, so many people associate going abroad, going on or holidays in general, in putting on weight and, you know, going backwards in their goals. So it's great to hear about something like this where you can actually boost your your steps towards your goal yeah definitely uh, because you know if somebody says to me that yes weight loss and that is their goal i do say look before you come i'm going to give you this shopping list this list of food, foods to eat because if you're coming away and you suddenly think you're going to be here to lose weight and yeah. this sort of thing mentally you can be a little bit out of sync and we've had people that started that and they've had a caffeine you know they, they want to give up caffeine and stuff and they want to give up alcohol but they do like a glass every night when they're at home now if they stop that and they come away they're going to have a, a headache for, the, for about three or four days yeah sometimes that can be quite severe so we have to like we have to find out what people want and make sure that they don't get that while they're away really and start it before if that's what they want to do and that's then we a great idea Mm, and then the follow-up that they have is that I always do add them on to the three-week, the 21-day plan, whatever I've got running at that time for 21 days when they come back so that they can carry on the benefits of what they've achieved on the holiday and then they can, they've got, a, they've got an in, input and then they, they come out of it as well. So, yeah. Fantastic. Right. So, going back to our main point, why women should lift weight. What are your top three tips, Gail? So um, you've got to you've got to start first of all knowing the technique 100 percent You need to know how to squat before you lift a weight. You need to know how to lunge before you lift a weight. Um, so make sure you you understand the basic moves, the move patterns. Um, make sure you get a program that is created specifically for you because if you pick up any old program you you know you're there to use a weights program to benefit your imbalances in your body as well as not just aesthetically don't just look at it aesthetically look at it to get the whole package out of it, to balance your body as well, to make sure your weak areas get strong and to make sure that you are getting specifically what you want for your body type, because yeah. your body type is very different from the next person. You know, I, I used to train with a wonderful girl for many years, many, many years. Her body type was completely different to mine. Uh, I didn't do the program that I wanted. Uh, my body type's completely different, but I enjoyed the time we spent together in the gym. Now, what I would say, if you want to see the real results, you don't do your friend's program, you do your own program, yeah? yeah? So that's it. So number one, make sure you know your compound moves 
and you can do them without a weight well that technique number two make sure you've got a program designed for you for what you want to achieve and what your body needs and number three make sure you are eating to support that training because some people when they come in they want they, they think an instant result is if they're right i start dieting at this moment in time yeah. and i'm going to do this and then they are training they would just lose motivation because you won't see any difference you won't gain you won't gain in anything and what you really want to be doing in the gym with weights is forgetting a little bit about the aesthetics of it you want to be focusing on the progression this week last week i did this weight it feels comfortable now i'm now going to put that weight up or i'm you know when you start to see your reps grow you know that you need to put your weight up so what you're looking for is to increase your weight in strength training for to achieve all those benefits That's great so, tips yeah. there gail so it is the first week of January. So I've got to, I'm asking all my guests this. I've got to tell you, what are your new, new year's resolutions? What are your goals for this year? Um, I've try, I'm trying now to, since the last three years of where a lot of things have been, whatever we're doing, we still pulled out of a bit of control. And, uh, and so I'm managing what I can control. So whereas probably last year, as far as, say business goals were concerned there was some structural things that I wanted to do and because of the circumstances I couldn't do those and so I'm taking control of what I can control so I'm going more inwardly as to um, controlling some things like uh, saying that I'm going to get better communication in business uh, I'm going to uh, face some fears in business that I've got. Um, so the more wrapped round like that, I would say, um, consistently, yeah, I thought, I think, you know, got consistency in workouts and things like that. Um, I just think that anything that I want to succeed in, succeed in yeah. yeah, I've got to consistently do it. So I've got to, I'm making sure that those things that I've got, so I like to learn a language. I like to improve my Greek, of course, you know. Um, and again, strength training is always one that I'm always trying to better myself in. <laughs> and I'm still reaching PBs, even at my age that I am wow, now. Even at my level I am now. Of course, yeah. And that's the thing. You can always get personal bests. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then I'm, I'm instead of counting the days, I'm making the days count. That's my thing. Love because, that. Yeah. Yeah. It is because, you know, we all at this time, here, right, what are you doing this year? Oh, I'm going on holiday in this and I'm going on holiday that. I've got this travel plan. I've got this night out plan. But, and I think, you know, to make the days count. So today, you know, it's a great day. I've spoken to you. And I, you know, you. I think it's good to journal that. It's good to journal that you've had po real positive days, you know? So real journal. Real positive communications. That's what you mentioned earlier. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Well, do you know what? That is exactly it. Because the one thing I'm not very good at is asking for help. Asking for help or asking people to come together, collaboration. Yeah. I'm not, you know, and I know, I know that's what we all have to do to grow. We have to collaborate and move forward. So you've definitely smashed that for me. <laughs> Check. <laughs> right, Gail, if people want to find out more about you, where can they find you? Oh, all over Facebook. All <laughs> over. <laughs> right. OK, so I've got my So Spa Fitness and Fun Holidays on Instagram and Facebook page uh, there. I've got Gail Abbey on Instagram uh, underscore Gail Abbey on Instagram and Gail Abbey Fitness on the Facebook page. Uh, Gailabbey.com. I've yeah. got my website, my website that Google. Uh, I'm, I'm on the Google business. So yeah, yeah I'm could, on. I did it. I just Google Gail Abbey. There's no other <laughs> one out there. Don't worry. It comes straight <laughs> to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> right. Thank you so much, Gail. Happy right. New Year. Thank Enjoy you, communicating Jody. lots. <laughs> Jody, if you go into, uh, I would be sharing this with my clients. So if you send me the link, won't you? You will do that. Oh, yes, I... of course. Yeah. Okay.
just tell everybody about you, you then for my clients about where they can find you and all of that lot. Sure, yes. So go to jodiewunting.com. Uh, my little story is basically I used to be 31 stones um, and I got into diet and fitness through my own weight loss journey. Um, and I'm one of the very few people I know that went from 31 stone, which is obviously morbidly obese, wow. to a relatively healthy weight just through diet and exercise. And, you know, there's not many people out there these days, is there, that can actually say that. It's all down to either shakes or weight loss surgery and stuff. So I'm just yeah. so, you know, this is why I'm so passionate about it, just through my personal weight loss. That's excellent. Well, I've got to, I've got to do a podcast with you then, haven't I? <laughs> oh, I love that, the way you switched it around. <laughs> <laughs> you just two two pushes you give me now <laughs> oh. great wonderful thank you so much gail all right thank you all right thank my you. pleasure bye bye see you bye <laughs>